Um, so just want to quell a couple of issues here. Um, I think the way that I present this problem usually gets people um, a little bit of idea of what I'm looking for. But you know, one of the major mistakes that I see a lot of students come in with this problem is they, under, they see the square root, and they see 9 and 4, and they immediately want to do split it up. Right? And it makes it look good. It's like, oh, 1, we get a nice, nice number. So we like that. So we want to do that. Right? But again, the reason, like, yes, we can't do that because you guys can see the 9 minus 4 is inside of a function, right? It's under the radical. And so if you apply you know, PEMDAS or the order of operations, you can see you have to subtract these first, which is the square root of 5. So you can't break it up into the square root of 9 minus square root of 4. Um, but you can apply it order of operations. Now, the reason why we get this mixed up, though, or a lot of students want to do this, is because we constantly do this with multiplication. For instance, if I had 9 times 4, we can actually break that up. That's part of the rules of the radicals. You can break this up into the square root of 9 times the square root of 4, which is 3, times 2, which is equal to 6, which if we apply the order of operations here, is the third square root of 36. So it works that way. right? So it works for multiplication and division. But please don't confuse that with addition or subtraction. Right? Yeah, you cannot break them apart. But in multiplication, you can break them apart, right? For multiplication and division. Yes. OK? So that's a common mistake, and that's something that's going to come up um, in, this ch in this class.